Hello YouTube, it's Doss Gregor, and today I'd like to talk about upgrading your kernel in Gen 2. Uh, that's something I don't do too often, and I thought today it might be a good day to try to do that. So I figured instead of just doing it, maybe I'd try to record all the steps and go through things with you, and well, I might make a few mistakes here and there and stumble, uh, that is going to be expected because updating your kernel really isn't something you do too often. So let's first start in our browser. And I have two uh, pages that I brought up. I have the Gen 2 kernel upgrade page as well as the complete handbook. The reason why I pulled up the handbook is as I was going through the kernel upgrade process and it gets all the way down here, it gets to the point where it says build. And I'm looking at this automated build and installation, and we are not using Gen Kernel because we are doing this manually. If you use the Gen Kernel, it does everything for you. It pretty much gives you a kernel that you don't have to mess with. It's just as if uh, another Ubuntu or, or, or other flavor uh, gives you that kernel because you're not going to edit it too often. Then Gen Kernel kind of does that. You can do some things with the Gen Kernel to edit to your specifications, but for the most part, it gives you a fully working kernel that's going to be just there. I've always customized all my kernels. And so as I was looking through there, there really was not very much information discussing this. So I figured, well, it's been a long time since I have done this. Let's find out. And so here we have, of course, uh, the line of what you would do when you want to build by hand using after the make menu config the make and make install modules install so one of the first things we want to do if we go back up here to the top of this list is we need to set the current config for the kernel now i've already done a world update all of those sort of things i did that a couple days ago so i know i have everything latest and greatest and I already have, of course, the Gen 2 sources. Well, we don't have to worry about that. You should also most likely have those. I also already have backups of my configurations and things that I have set because I have configured it with the config flag, which we'll talk about down here. So first we need to go to eSelect kernel to get there. So if we go over here to the command line, and I've made this a little bit bigger, so hopefully you will see. If we do an eSelect list, kernel, eSelect kernel list, you will see I am currently set to Linux 4972. And if we were to do an ls-lsa on user source, you will find that Linux is pointing to Linux 4972. Now we want to make sure that it is going to point to 4.19.7.2. And the easiest way to do that is to do an eselect kernel set, and the option for 4.19.7.2 is 4. So, and be sure to do sudo when you do that. Now, if we go back up there and we do a look at this, you will see that user source Linux right here is now pointing to with that shortcut to Linux 4.19.72 instead of 4.9.72. Of all the things, it's it, it's crazy that my kernel that I am currently using is 4.9 and it's going to 4.19, which is going to cause a little bit of confusion. I hope hope not though. Uh, so if we go to cd into user source Linux, and I, of course, made another mistake, slash user source Linux, do an ls, you'll see all the headers and all the configurations. We go back to our instructions. We see copy previous kernel configuration. It gives you a couple options to do. I apologize if you're hearing the jets in the air. <laughs> They seem to be flying over at this time. Now, I have always created a config in my kernel. So what I can do is copy from the boot my config file to user source linux.config. So if we come back into here, we can do cp slash boot config 
4972 Gen2, and we can just do dot config because we're in user source Linux. We don't need to fully qualify it because we're already in that directory. So we will copy that here. And of course, sudo. <laughs> Ah, these are the things when you're trying to do stuff fresh, so you're just not repeating yourself. <laughs> so remember, whenever you're working with these things, you either need to be a super user or using sudo to get your commands to go through. So now that we've done that, we need to update the config file because there's going to be some changes between your old configuration and your new configuration. And it states here, a new kernel usually requires a new config file to support new kernel features. The config file from the old kernel can be converted to use with the new kernel. The conversion can be done several ways, including running either make silent to old config or make old def config. Now there is a note here that says make silent to old config is being removed as of Linux version 419, which I guess is what I'm using now, and it will be replaced with make uh, sync config. So that is interesting. Uh, for now, let us look at this and think how we want to go about doing this. Um, we could either still probably do this this way or we can use the old def config. Now it says silent2 config is going away or being removed. Well, maybe we should go ahead and do the make old def config. So let's go back in there. And for the sake of things, I'm going to go ahead and go into my sudo user account. So I don't have to keep forgetting to use sudo. So now that I'm in here as that, you'll see that the um, coloring has changed to red to remind me uh, that I am as a uh, super user now instead of as my user account. So let's remind ourselves what we're doing here. We're already in the user source Linux. So we're going to make make old def config. So make old def config. Let that run through its state. And as I stated, I have not done this in a long time. So this is going to be a little new to me. So it's, I'm not as sharp on everything as I used to be. So there we go. Everything has been written. Now, if you want to take a look and make sure that things are proper, we can still do the make menu config. And that should bring up our GUI interface to the configuration where you can look at all the settings. Now if you're asking me, DOS, where do we set that flag up so that we can have it always build the configuration file for us for the boot? I believe that if you go to general setup and you go down here, you should be able to find that configuration setting. kernel config support right here. And that's what it is that I set up so that it'll go ahead and create the config file. It's really good to do that and I wanted to talk a little bit about that before we continue on. I've had people in the past say, you know, I built Gen 2, I had it working, the conf everything worked great with the kernel and then I decided to go and do some other things and I wiped it and I went and I did things and now I cannot remember for the life of me how I set up this or that because you know shoot once you set something up once you don't normally have to repeat yourself by creating your kernel with the dot config support if you have that perfect kernel and as long as you back up that config somewhere then if you decide to go back to Gen 2 on that same machine, you can reuse that config file and it will save you hours of troubleshooting and trying to figure out what you need to do to make something that used to work, work again. A very handy thing to do. We really don't need to do any editing. I don't believe there's really much more in this, but if you wanted to look at everything, you could do that 
and glance at each one of these. The most important things, of course, are in your um, networking support and driver, device driver areas, making sure that those things that you had before are still there. If you need to add or remove file systems or things like that, those are going to be mostly the places that you go to look. We don't need to do anything in this or this example, so we're just going to go ahead and exit. And now if we go back to our instructions, it says we need to build. And while these automated build and installations are not really needed, they do have a link, of course, to the manual configuration. I have found the handbook, so we're just going to go here. And for the AMD64, we're just going to tell this thing to make. So I like to do things one step at a time. So let's tell this to make, and we will allow this to continue to compile for a while. I am going to pause the video because there is no sense in you guys sitting here watching everything go across the screen. This may take a little bit of time. And we're back, and it completed, and that took a little bit of time, but it's done. So now we want to do the make install, and we will verify. That's it. Make install, yes. And let's see. Make install, modules install. So we will do that all one command, because whenever there's this and percent twice, this is one command, and then this whole section here is the second command. So make install space modules underscore install. All right, and now if we do a look at the boot, we now see that we have, there's my old kernel with the 492, and we have the new kernel 419, the system map 419, uh, the, the VM Linus for 419 and 49, and we've got the old, I always keep an old version for backup, just in case. And if we go back to here, we've got that installed, and that pretty much ends that part of the handbook, so let's go back to this part of it. And we need to do make modules prepare. Let's see, reinstalling the external kernel modules. Any external kernel modules, such as binary kernel modules, need to be rebuilt for each new kernel if the kernel has, been, has not been built yet. It has to be first prepare the building of the external kernel modules. Package containing the kernel modules can be rebuilt using the app modules rebuild. So let's try that. I shouldn't have too many, but let's try this right here. And instead of typing it, we're just going to copy it. Let's see what happens here. And of course, it's using that dash dash ask, or you could just use dash a. Now, I know I have VirtualBox installed on this, so it may need the VirtualBox modules to be reinstalled. And that may be the only thing. Now, you, you, know, you say, now, DOS, uh, you're not even booted into this new kernel. You know, uh, how is it you're able to go ahead and compile this? Uh, you have user source Linux pointing to your new kernel headers. And it's going to go ahead and compile against those kernel headers and not necessarily to the kernel that you're currently using. So it is safe to go ahead and do this at this time. Uh, we will see what pops up here. And I will pause for two seconds just so that I'm not wasting dead air time for you. And it's completed. And as I thought, we only have the VirtualBox modules to install. So it's going to reinstall those. We're going to say yes. Let that go through. And it will rebuild. And as you saw real quick, it did say 4.19.72. So it will compile that. And I will pause until it's completed. And that actually went quite quickly. Now, the last step you need to do, and this is going to be different for each of you depending upon how you're booting your system, 
whether you're using grub or lilo or another method. Uh, there are many different ways right now. Now I use grub, but I do things a little bit differently because my system is so strange. I have different partitions with different um, versions of Gen 2. In fact, my uh, bootloader and all that actually runs off of a KDE partition that I have back on the KDE four days before we went to Plasma 5. And I happened to freeze that Gen 2 build right before they changed all of it to point to five. So it's a very old partition, but it still has the most stable version that I ever had with KDE4 back in the days when I used to use KDE4. I'm currently using, of course, i3. So what we want to do now that we've done this is I want to go into my mount point for that, which I just have set up as mount KDE, and I want to go to the boot directory there. And if we do a directory search there, you'll see that I have grub. And if you were to look at my slash uh, boot directory from the original, you'll see I just have a backup and my kernel files. So everything really is running off of that first partition from the KDE. So we'll go into grub. And now I know they always say don't manually edit these, but this is what I do and it works for me and I've been doing this for so many years. So like I said, this part you might not want to follow along, but I wanted to show you everything I would have to do to make this work. So we're going to do a nano-w and we're going to edit the grub cfg. Do not edit this file. Yes, I know. But I'm going to edit this file because I don't really need to go through all the automated things. So I just want to pop on down here. I see you'll see here's my, uh, get my right there my menu entry for classic KDE4 that I still have on there. And then you'll see that here's actually what I'm running right now is the Plasma 5 Gen 2. Even though I'm running i3, I made these entries a long time ago. So all I'm going to do for now is I'm going to go down to this menu entry. Now this is just verbiage. This will tell me this is 4.19.72, so I don't get confused. And then down here, this is going, of course, the first hard drive and uh, third partition. And we want to change just a few things here. It's going to boot the Linux with boot VM Linux, and we want to add a 1 in front of the 9, because we're doing 4.19.72 instead of 4.9.72. And that is all I need to do to be able to boot to this. So let's save it. And we are out of it and it is correctly saved. At this point in time, uh, I need to reboot the computer. Of course, that's going to lose all video editing and through the miracle magic of the fact that it's all going to work great, I hope. <laughs> uh, we will say that this was a successful update of the kernel. So at this point in time, I'm going to end the video. So if it's morning, evening, noon or night, whatever you're having, I hope you enjoy it. Thanks for watching. If by any chance this blows up does not work, well, if it does that, I won't upload the video. If it does work and all is good, then and you're seeing this and you're listening to me, then you know it was all good. Everything worked perfectly fine. And maybe I'll give an update in my next video. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Bye, guys.